Now let us look at TBL now. As I have already mentioned, the root value is remember TV. So ventral divisions of the anterior primary ramai of L4, L5, S1, S2, and S3. So looking at the course, it is the larger terminal branch of the sciatic nerve and extends from the superior angle to the inferior angle of popliteal fossa and it crosses the popliteal vessels from the lateral to the medial side and then it continues in the back of leg. And lastly, it passes deep to the flexor retinaculum of ankle. And this is the table showing the branches of TBL now in popliteal fossa in the back of leg. So the terminal branch of TBL now is the medial plantar now and the lateral plantar now. And coming to the clinical correlation of TBL now, we have the tarsal tunnel syndrome similar to the carpal tunnel syndrome in hand. In our ankle also, we have the flexor retinaculum. So when this is compressed, the tibial nerve is compressed in the flexor retinaculum of ankle joint, this occurs and it is associated with pain and paresthesia in the sole of foot, which is often worse at the night, like it is often worse at the night. So now we have come to the common peroneal nerve. The root value of common peroneal nerve, as I had already mentioned, C, D. So the dorsal divisions of ventral Rami, that is both the same only anterior or ventral of L4, L5, S1 and S2. So the course, it is a smaller terminal branch of the sciatic nerve and it lies in the lateral part of the popliteal fossa and along the medial border of bicep femoris muscle. And then it ends by dividing into two terminal branches. Now this is a small table for the branches of common peroneal nerve. So the only muscular branch it supplies is the short end of bicep femoris that also may be like maybe it may supply or may not supply and the terminal branch are the deep peroneal nerve and the superficial peroneal nerve. Now let us look at the clinical correlation of common peroneal nerve. So in the course of common peroneal nerve it runs on the lateral border of the shaft of fibula. So this is the region. So it can get injured here. That is the location to be exact and accurate. It is the posterior lateral side of the neck of fibula. So it can get injured. So and it can get entrapped between the attachment of peroneus longus to the head and the shaft of fibula. It leads to foot drop as shown in this figure. And this is a like in popliteal fossa we have the tibial nerve running through it. That's it. You have to know this. Coming to the deep peroneal nerve, it is one of the two terminal branches of the common peroneal nerve and it is given off between the neck of fibula and the peroneus longus muscle. It is the nerve of the anterior compartment of leg and the dorsum of foot. Now coming to the course and relations, the deep peroneal nerve begins on the lateral side. So let us come back to our very handsome skeleton. Here this is the anterior side and this is the posterior side, it is obvious. And here, this is our common peroneal nerve. It is also called as common fibular nerve. This is peroneus longus muscle. And this is the extensor digitorum longus. So I am currently removing this extensor digitorum longus. So here it separates into these two branches. That is the deep fibular nerve and the superficial fibular nerve. That is deep peroneal nerve and common peroneal nerve. So this is the extensor digitorum longus. And this is being pierced by this deep fibular nerve. That is the deep peroneal nerve. Uh, so this is the deep peroneal nerve. And then it is accompanied by the anterior tibial artery. Note that this deep peroneal nerve is closely related to the anterior tibial artery throughout its course. And also note how funny it is because in the upper part it is lateral to this artery but in the middle part it kind of tries to come to the anterior side but then again in the lower part it then again goes to the lateral side. So it's like the nerve is trying to cross to the medial side but then it is hesitant hence it is continuing on the lateral side. Hence, this deep peroneal nerve is also called as nervous hesitance. Isn't it cute? And finally, it terminates into the two branches that is the lateral and the medial terminal branch. 
lateral terminal branch ends on a pseudo ganglion ends on a pseudo ganglion and branches arise from this pseudo ganglion and then it supplies the extensor digitorum brevis and uh, the tarsal joints and coming to the medial uh, terminal branch it ends by supplying the skin adjoining the first interdigital cleft and the proximal digits of the big toe and these are the branches of deep peroneal nerve uh, supplies the anterior uh, compartment muscles and we can look at the articular supplies that it supplies the ankle joint tarsal joint tarso metatarsal and the metatarso phalangeal joint now let us see the superficial peroneal nerve it is the smaller terminal branch of the common peroneal nerve and it arises in the substance of peroneus longus uh, unlike uh, deep peroneal nerve it arises within in the substance of peroneus longus lateral to the neck of fibula and these are the branches of superficial peroneal nerve so since what are the muscles on the lateral side of leg like, peroneus longus peroneus brevis end of discussion so the muscular supply of superficial peroneal nerve which lies laterally in the leg is these two muscles and cutaneous supply so these are the cutaneous supply and note it doesn't supply the nail buds this is a point to be noted and plantar nerves uh, they are the terminal branches of tibial nerve there are two plantar nerves the medial plantar nerve and the lateral plantar nerve and these nerves begin deep to the flexor retinaculum of ankle joint coming to the medial plantar nerve it is the larger so medial side larger and it lies between the adductor hallucis and the flexor digitorum brevis and it ends by giving muscular cutaneous and articular branches and the branches of medial nerve can be seen here and these are the muscular branches and this one supplies the nail bud of the medial three and a half which is why i emphasize here that the superficial peroneal nerve doesn't supply the nail bud because that work is done by the plantar nerves now coming to the lateral plantar nerve this smaller terminal branch and it runs obliquely between the first and second layers of sole till the tuberosity of fifth metatarsal bone and at this region it divides into a superficial and a deep branch and these are the branches of lateral plantar nerve so there are basically quite a lot of muscles it supplies the main things to be noted are the abductor digiti minimi and the flexor digitorum accessorius and it also has a superficial branch and a deep branch and they supply a few other muscles and we can look at the articular and cutaneous and vascular branches as well so finally let us look at injuries to nerve and their effects so these tables show the injuries to nerves and their effects that is the motor loss and the sensory loss some very important points are in case of sciatic nerve if there is any injury to sciatic nerve food drop occurs and common peroneal nerve food drop occurs and in case of tibial nerve due to sensory loss a trophic ulcer may develop and uh, these also can be noted so that concludes tibial nerve and common peroneal nerve which are the branches of sciatic nerve this is literally all that you need to know about sciatic nerve tibial nerve and common peroneal nerve if you haven't seen my previous video on sciatic nerve make sure you check out this video and subscribe to this channel for more such content and as always thank you for watching see you soon